wherever you are right now, the assignment God has on your life, it's bigger than what you're dealing with right now. Okay, can I be real, 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 real with you? Your assignment is really not your assignment. Your assignment is God's assignment. So if you're overwhelmed with your assignment, if you're frustrated with your assignment, if you're irritated by your assignment, you are sure that you have placed yourself before God. Because if God said my presence will be with you and I'm giving you the assignment, then it's God's assignment. You're just an overseer or you're just an instrument that God's going to use. Don't think so highly of yourself. It's not about you. It's about God. We often get off course because we start thinking too highly of ourselves. Even when we're going through something, we're thinking too highly of ourselves. Because really what you're going through is really not for you. It's for God to use you in the midst of it to show others how good he is. So God will have big men and women in assignment to a key assignment that's bigger than their current reality. Today God is calling men and women because the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. God is not stopped calling people because there's still work to do. There's still sinners that need to be saved. There's still families and generations need to be turned around. So God is calling men and women today because God still has a purpose and assignment for us. The question is, will you act to the call and will you stay the course? Yes. Come on. Amen. Let's walk through the text real quickly. Let's walk through the Bible real quickly to give you a foundation to build upon on today. God called Moses. To lead the people. Yes. But Moses kept trying to back out. Because Moses knew everything that was messed up about Moses. Uh, get, get, get this now. Get this. I want you to see something. God called Moses to a big assignment. But Moses kept looking at a big mess he had made. How many of you on this morning, as God is calling you and tugging on you, you keep reminding God of who you are. Don't you think God knew who you were when he called you? Don't you think God knew all about you when he gave you the assignment? He gave you the assignment because of you. God calls Gideon, Gideon. God calls Gideon a mighty warrior and assigns him to defeat the opposing armies that were coming against the people of God. But Gideon tried to back out because Gideon felt unqualified. I mean, if you today, as God is calling you and telling you to do something, God's giving you assignment, God's giving you purpose, but you can't get God, but you don't have. God knew what you didn't have when he gave you the assignment. God calls Gideon a mighty man, even though Gideon wasn't acting like a mighty man. God sees more in us than we see in ourselves. Oh, somebody should be praising God right there. I'm glad God saw more in me than I saw in myself. Is there another brother in this house and you're glad God saw more in you than you saw in Come on, sir. God calls him a mighty warrior. And Gideon keeps saying, well, I'm not qualified. When he called you, he qualified. Yes, yes, yes. No! This is going to mess you up. Old Testament, when God was getting ready to send spies into the promised land, they ran across a situation. And God used a prostitute to guide the holy chosen spies on a calm's way. And she tried to back out of the assignment because she knew she had an ungodly story. Oh, uh, if you knew the amount of people who started out out of an ungodly story. If you, if you go through the literature of Jesus, you will see many ungodly stories in the family tree of Jesus because God is not looking of where you are. God is at where you're going. And I wish I had a church in here that was transparent. God took you out of ungodly stuff because God had a godly assignment and purpose for you. Stop reminding God of every mistake you made, every error you made, because God already knew Come on, sir. That's what he shed his blood for. God shows up with Esther and tells this Esther woman to go and deliver my people. And Esther tries to back out because she tells God, I'm both a female and a foreigner. If I open my mouth right now, they'll chop off my head. But God is not worried about your sex, your gender. God is not worried about your nationality. God is not worried about you a Democrat or a Republican. God is not concerned about anything. When God calls you, He will tell you what He told Esther. You were born for such a time as this. Such a time as this. Come on. I wish I had somebody in this house and you realized you were born for a time like this. And when God gave you a silence, you will feel a ball. If you open your mouth and if you don't do what God called you, there will be a ball in the earth rim. Stay the course. Right. 
I can go on and on with biblical examples of God setting men and women on a kingdom course. Now get this, a kingdom course, not your course. Stop believing on your own understanding. If you believe on your own understanding, you'll get tired and you'll have what's called spiritual burnout. That's why you so many people run around the church and scream and shout, Lord, if you need somebody to go, I'll go. But when they were really saying, Lord, I want to do my thing, you endorse my thing. If you do it that way, you'll burn out and you'll get tired and you'll frustrated. Even if you start looking around who's not with you, who's not incorporating with you, who's not, it's not about you or him, it's about a kingdom of sin. Come on! Get on your assignment. Come on, church. Get on your assignment. God told Moses, my presence will be with you. God told Esther, you were born to do this. Uh, I draw from that right there. If God is with me, Come if God is with you, and God snapped you out your mother's womb for this, such a time. how would you get on track? If God is with you, that means he's before you, behind you, and on the side of you. See, there were some people that started out on the side of you and they fell off. There were people that started out behind you and they fell off. There were people that leaving you out front of you and they fell off. But guess what? God is still present. And God has stayed the course. If my mother and father forsake me, God has stayed the course. If my brother and sisters leave me, God has stayed the course. If they fire you, God has stayed the course. Come on. As we move out of 2019 yes. into 2020, yes. I encourage you to grab this spirit. Stay a course. Yes. God is with you. And God created you to do what He called and handpicked you to do. You missed that right there. You missed that. Come on. God handpicked you to do what He called you to do. God didn't just roll the dice and your name came up. God didn't have a lottery system in your name. God can pick you. Have you considered my servant, Job? It was a random assignment. God can pick you. And told the devil before it was all over, before the last bell rings, Job going to defeat you, Satan. So we move this morning to the primary text. I had to build a foundation first. But for note takers, for this is the notes, tweet this text, this share this moment. Don't let the humanity in your Christianity get you off track. Don't let the humanity in your Christianity get you off track. We all have flaws. And for the Bible says, all. Oh. Every preacher, every deacon, every evangelist, every singer, Every musician, every usher, every greeter, every pew member, whatever that is. Everybody in the kingdom of God has a flaw they got to deal with in a struggle. Paul said the good I would, but evil is always present. God keeps in the position that we're always going to overcome something because God wants to depend and rely on him. But what God has said is, well, don't let your humanity in Christianity cause you to fall off track. Don't let what you've done or what you're doing or what you've been through, what you're going through to keep you off track. Stay the course. Somebody say stay the course. Stay the course. Those that are able to stand, stand with me again for the reading of God's word. This is the main primary text on this morning. We won't be before you very long. After church, we have some church to do. The birth of Jesus foretold is the headline. Breaking news. Yeah, it's breaking news. We get Luke chapter 1. We go back to Luke chapter 1. I pray that you read when you're reading Luke chapter 1 to your family at home. Mm, Luke chapter 1. Let's pick up where we left off at the last Sunday in verse number 26. The rain standing for the duration of the reading of God's word if you're able to stand. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel Gabriel to Nazarene, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Wow. Mary was greatly troubled at the words and wondered 
what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Well, I can't insert your name right now. Do not be afraid, Mary. Put your name there. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. Oh, yes, yes. Him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him a throne of his father David. He will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Look at verse 34. Mary said, How will this be? Come on, sir. Right. Like Moses and Gideon and Esther and the prostitute, she had doubts. Yeah. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since she's going to the condition of a current reality, not looking at the one who it controls her next reality. How can this be since I am a virgin? And you can insert any multiple situations. That how can this be since I am a woman? How can this be since I am a black man in this not so United States of America? How can this be when I have a troubled past? How can this be when I've been divorced? How can this be when I've been on drugs? How can this be when I've been in poverty? How can this be when, when I've been through this day? How can this be? Pastor! And they fired me. How can this be? They touched me. How can this be? They abandoned me. How can this be? Sis, I... Come on, sir. Verse 25, back to the text. Verse 25, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. I've already shown you my power. Verse 37, but no word from God will ever fail. God ever. But no word from God will ever fail. Mama, daddy, sister, brother, but no word from God will ever fail. If God said it, so is it. In conclusion, verse 38, I am the Lord's servant. This is more, which is Mary responding. I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Put this, put this script up. Before you sit down, watch this. Oh, it comes to you. What they think, what they think has killed more dreams than failure ever will. Mm. And you take the season, stay the course. And stop worrying about what they think. That's real. That's real. Oh, you, you missed that right there. Stay the course. Stay the course. And stop worrying about what they think. Let, let, let's intertwine real quickly. We're going to have a spiritual tennis match between Joseph and Mary real quickly. But I want you to see yourself in the context of the text. Yes. Joseph had to stay the course. Yes. The law, the law said stone her. Let me take a picture again for those who are familiar. Joseph and Mary engaged. Yes, sir. Mary says, I'm a virgin, which means they've never had intercourse. Yes, in the Bible it says Adam and Eve knew each other, which meant they knew each yeah, other, yeah, yeah. which means there was intercourse that took place to produce their children. Yeah. And we, we saw on the last two weeks that when, 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 when he got the word, when he got the word, he went back home to his wife Elizabeth, and the Bible says he was with her, which means he played a role to make sure that his son John, did. they had intercourse, but this time around, um, this virgin woman asked the man on Tuesday night, could you handle your wife coming home saying, I'm pregnant and it's not because of you, but the Holy Spirit impregnated me? Job had to deal with his lovely girl, his lovely fiance, telling him, I'm getting ready to have a baby, but it won't be from you. So the Lord gives Job the right to show her. If you step out on your covenant agreement by law, you can be stoned to death. But what Mary was carrying was bring a new covenant, and the new covenant would cover her, and his name would be Jesus. Yes. Uh, you miss your shout yes. right there. The law says stone her, but the new covenant says cover her. Let the redeemed of the Lord make some noise. Let the redeemed of the Lord make some noise. And for those who drop out of Bible school or didn't go to Sunday school to be to you, let me refine you or define to you what the redeemed means. It means to be removed from the purity of past mistakes and errors. So is there anybody here who can call themselves 
a part of the redeemed nation. God has removed the penalty from the mistakes you've made. God has taken your path and thrown it in the sea of forgiveness. That's the redeemed. So God was using Mary to remind Joseph what she's carrying is not casting the law, but it's covering her from the law. Okay. Now, I'm going to share this in the spirit. What I discovered, those who use the law to kill you are forgetting they qualify for the death penalty. Because if none of us are perfect, that means under the law, we all have positioned ourselves under the death penalty. So be careful who you're trying to kill with your words. Be careful who you're protection you're trying to kill. Be careful who you're trying to disqualify. Be careful on the things you're saying and doing to other people because you need to be around somewhere. Look back over your life story. If it were not for the grace and mercy of God, you'd be standing there for all right now. So not only Joseph to deal with the law, to deal with the hood because he was from Nazareth and Galilee. The hood said to leave her. But love says I never fail. My boy say leave her, kick her to the curb. But love says I never fail. See, the Bible says God so loved the world. And Jesus backs it up by saying, I died for you while you were still yet a sinner. So how dare you throw somebody away when God himself said, I love the world, the unsaved world, the undisciplined world, the corrupt world. I love the world so much, I'm going to give you a gift, my son Jesus. And Jesus is going to come and die for you while yet you're still a sinner. Not when you got saved, not when you got baptized, not when you got you together. Jesus came while you were still yet a sinner. Is there anybody here this morning and you're glad Jesus didn't wait you got yourself together to come for you, but he came for you just as you are? Stay the course. And Joseph had to stay the course by dealing with the law and dealing with the hood and then Joseph, like you would have to deal with family and friends in his ear. Family and friends in his ear. Family and friends said, this her. Put her name on blast. Go on social media and drag her through the social media pages. That woman went and got pregnant on you. Dog her out. This her. That's what the family and friends had dissed her. She was never good enough, never not good enough for you anyway. You know how family and friends act. They say this her. But the word says, I'm coming to save her and not condone her. In the word she's getting ready to carry says, I'm coming to save her and not condemn her. And this is God's church. This is Christ's church. Why are we behaving ungodly? If God says, I've come to say he's not condemned, why are you so judgmental? Why are you so hypocritical? You know you got more than enough problems in your situation, yet you blast somebody else's problems. You're dissing other folks when you should be having your own business. And Jesus sends grace and mercy in spite of what he knows about us. Uh, so I often, I often, I often joke and wonder what would church look like if we can post all of your thoughts on the big screen. <laughs> If every time you think something will pop up. You'll see in your thoughts popping up. You'll preach your thoughts in your seat, your thoughts are popping up. You shut your mouth in. No. You no. be so quick to these other folks. And Joseph had to deal with the law and Joseph had to deal with the hood and Joseph had to deal with his family and friends, but he stayed the course. Can you stay the course in spite of the, all the chaos around you? And then that's intertwined with Mary because she too had to stay the course. She had to totally trust God with no blueprint. Talk about that. What God was telling Mary to do, there was nobody she could run to for advice. She couldn't go to her mother, she couldn't go to her aunt, she couldn't eat, she, she, Elizabeth could relate a little bit, but not all the way. Elizabeth had a husband. That she was with. So it could make sense. But Mary had no blueprint. You gotta learn to stay the course. And realize God is getting ready to do a new thing in your life. Let go of the past. What God is getting ready to do through you and in you may have never been done before you, but that's why God handpicked you. Let me just step right there. They came and do me some work with the church and they asked me for the blueprint of the building. I said, well, we ain't got no blueprint. So, Pastor, how y'all know where we at? We just figured out. <laughs> we just figured out step by step. When they brother Brother Brian came in and do some electrical work and he misfigured something out, we took the switch and instead of me coming on, then went out. Went back to the drawing board. All the lights came back on. You work through it. You don't quit because of it. 
So sometimes God will place you in a situation with no blueprint to tell you to go. But God, where I'm going, just go. But when I'll be there, just go. Stay of course. And totally trust God. Mary has been willing to do it alone. Guess what it took? She didn't know the joke would leave her. She didn't know the joke would stone her. She didn't know how people in town would treat her. But she told the angel, may it be fulfilled. I am a servant of God and I'm going to do as God says. Are you willing to walk this journey? You got to walk by yourself. God told Moses, my presence is with you. And Jesus reminds us, I'll never leave you. I'll be with you always. Stop tripping and waiting on others. Stay the course. Watch this. You are what you need. And God will supply all your needs. Let me say it one more time. You are what you need. And God will supply all your needs. She was willing to do it. Right you are the key to it. Stay the and then finally, she had to be committed to death. Yes, Because if the story ended wrong, mm. she would find herself being stoned to death. Yes, or she would find herself isolated from the people and pushed out. Remember the story of Abraham Big Mom? He left her under a tree with no child support mm. to die in the desert. Yes. And Lisa could have been facing the same story. Yes. Mary could have been facing the same story. Came to the curb. Come on, Pastor. Called all kind of names. And told you go and figure it out if we let you in. She was so committed to the court. Committed to death. For God I live. For God I die mindset. That's what we gotta have going in 2020. For God I live. For God I die mindset. Question today. Are you committed? Are you really committed to reach your full potential? Or have you been conditioned to talking, to lip service? But are you really committed to the point where if it doesn't happen, you will not try? But you'll never stop. You'll never give up. You'll stay the course. Because let me conclude here. If they stay the course, they will produce greatness. Jesus was called great. If they stay the course, listen to this. If you stay the course, greatness will come out of you. Yes. But nothing except failure and disappointment will come out of you if you drop off. Stay the course. Stop quitting. If you stay the course, they will do something that they've never seen done before. Then the Bible declares old things are gone, new things are here. You're a brand new person. Assigned to a brand new mission. Stop dragging your past into your assignment. Stop worrying about what they say. When you hear from God, you better bust a move and say, with this new assignment, I'm a new person, and God will give me everything I need prepared. If they stay the course, their decision, like your decision, will change the world. Matter of fact, we can call Mary and Joseph world changers because they brought Jesus into the world. Of course. And Emmanuel came to put us on course. It's where you fall in. Because they stayed the course. Emmanuel came to put us on course. Jesus was born to get us on course. Jesus went to the cross to keep us on course. He paid the price. He paid the fair for us to stay on course on a cross called on a hill called Calvary. Jesus came out of the grave on the third day to empower us with the ability to stay the course. And after Jesus went back to glory, he declared, I'm going to give you an extra gift called the Holy Spirit to keep you on course when you fall off course. Because God knew every now and then we mess up. Every now and then we slip and fall. So the Holy Spirit comes to guide us back on course. So if you're here this morning, and you found yourself off course. The Holy Spirit says, Come. Let me get you back on course. If you hear that, you allow what they say to get you off course. Come to this altar and get back on course. If you're here on this morning, you 
you, you decide that I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of going around and going around in circles. There's a point in the Bible where the Bible says God told the children of Israel, you've been going around that mountain long enough, not moving more. But if you're tired of going around the mountain, around and around, making you a student, how can this be? And God, I hear you, but you know that I'm this, that, and another. God says, come now, let me redeem you. Let me restore you. Let me renew you. Come to this altar right now, just as you are. And let God go to work on you. Yeah. So we're offering you now, though even those who are watching online, we're offering you now an opportunity to turn all over to Jesus. Yes, Lord. To come to this altar to become a part of this ministry, what God is doing to become a covenant part, become a member of this church. In 2019, thus far, 159 people have walked down the aisle and said, yes, I want to be a member of the Green House. But now we have to go to another level of not just getting members, but creating disciples. Come now, let God use you. Let God use you in spite of you. 